Hello friends, in this session I am going to take up the topic of deadlock avoidance. So what do we do in deadlock avoidance? We basically try to avoid deadlock. Now how can one try to avoid deadlock? So whenever there are some processes and resources, we are basically trying try uh, we are basically trying to find some allocation order in which the entire system does not does not ever uh, get struck in a deadlock right that uh, deadlock is which situation in which some processes are waiting for some other processes in order to complete and they are never able to complete so uh, basically in deadlock avoidance we try to find a safe sequence that is the sequence of allocation of resources to a certain set of processes such that they never they never get struck into a deadlock so if we are able to find a safe sequence then we say that deadlock is not present otherwise the deadlock is possible we are not sure that it will always occur but we can say it is possible so now the first and the foremost algorithm for deadlock avoidance was banker's safety algorithm there are many gate numericals also on the basis of the same and we are also going to discuss the same in the coming videos so what is this algorithm let's first discuss it the algorithm is first uh, used to find a safe sequence and no the notation is that we have a certain set of n processes in, in this which are represented as p1 p2 so on till pn so there are four steps in this algorithm in the first case what do we do is we set finish n equals to false and work equals to available now what is finish n basically they are just a set of flag uh, you can say an array of flags wherein all the flags are set to false initially right they are all initialized to false and work is initialized to available whereas uh, where available is what it is the number of resource instances corresponding to each resource type for example for example available could be let's say i have three resource types a b and c and the available availability is 3 to 1 so i have three resource instances of a two of b and one of c so that could be available now i assign work uh, i take a variable and assign available to it the next is what next step is what find ith process for which finish of i equals to false and need is less than equals to work now finish of i equals to false find the ith process for which finish of i equals to false and need is less than equals to work now need is less than equals to work what does it mean that a process need is less than what are the total number of available resources and initially finish i is false that means the process has not been allocated any resource so it is the first beginning stage of that process so if no such process is available then you just go to step four which is what that we just exit that uh, algorithm so if there is no other if basically there is no process with let's say need less than equals to work or the flag is set to false that means if the flag is not set to set to false it means that the processes have been worked upon otherwise if need is le not less than equals to work we can say the available resources are lesser than what are required so in that case what we do is we exit the algorithm otherwise what we do is work is equals to work plus allocated allocated is what what are the resources which have been already allocated to particular resource a process a process may be let's say if a process p1 it may have initially been allocated two resource instances of a but it might but it might be in the need of three resources three more resources of three more in, uh, resource instances of a so that is the difference between allocation and need so we what do we do is work equals to work plus allocator and finish of i equals to true finish of i equals to true and then what we do is we go to step two we go to step two so what i am trying to do over here is what i am trying to do over here is i first saw that this particular process p1 is having need less than what is what actually i have the number of, let's say my available set of resources for a were 5 now what i saw was need is less than equals to this 
if need is less than equals to this that means i can fulfill this process's need right so i can fulfill this process need and if i can fulfill this need then i would what i will do is i'll just start with this process now if i start with this process and i also fulfill its need then what will happen after it completes its work it will it will what what will it do it will release the already allocated resource instances as well because because now it has completed it is not need of these resources right so it required three it will be given these three right now let's say if i just give these three uh, resource resource instances to this the available will be what available will be 5 minus 3 which is 2 right so now what are the total number of resources allocated to p1 there will be 2 plus 3 5 Two plus this three five, and after it is done with its work, what will happen? It will release all the resources acquired by it. So it will be two plus five, which will be seven. So in other words, I could say that since I can fulfill its need, I'll fulfill its need. But after it is done, I'm going to get these many extra set of resources. So I'll get two this extra resource instances corresponding to A, and therefore. the availability will eventually become 5 plus 2 which is 7 so the work becomes 5 plus 2 which is 7 and now finish of i is set to true because i have processed this process so i have assigned the required set of resources to this and it has completed its work then we again go to step 2 and we search for the next such process whose need is less than work now this is the new work which is 7 now right whose need is less than work and whose flag was false that is it has not been processed so in such a manner what we try to do is we basically try to find for a particular sequence in which we can fulfill the need of each and every uh, process and once we are done what will happen is you'll get if no such process is available then go to step 4 you'll come to step 4 if finish of i is true for all the n processes so it will eventually become true for all the n processes then the system is in safe state otherwise the system is in unsafe state and if you just note down the order in which you processed those processes that will give you the safe sequence so that's all for this banker safety algorithm so i'm sure this uh, explanation would have been a bit fruitful to you and in the next session i'm going to take up a gate question and an example question of the same banker safety algorithm as a numerical so stay tuned for more good work coming up thank you